and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video we're going to be starting a brand new series and we're going to do a painting of a path in the springtime with flowers and trees in bloom. If you want to follow along traditionally here are some of the brushes that I use and I also use canvas board or wrapped canvas and I also like to use Grumbacher Academy paint and here's a list of the paint that I use and these are acrylics and I also use Liquitex acrylics and the names might vary with different brands. The app that we're going to be using is Infinite Painter for Android and I want to go ahead and sort of start with um, sort of a 5x7 or 8x10 size canvas and you can pick these presets in Infinite Painter as well. And I want to go ahead and do the sky. And so we want kind of a light blue color for the sky. So if you're following along with your acrylics, you would use ultramarine blue with white acrylic gesso. And throw in maybe a touch of burnt sienna just to gray it out a little bit. And then I wanted to go ahead <coughs> and draw in a sketch of where the major elements of my painting would be. And so it doesn't have to be a really detailed sketch. Just kind of make a, a sort of a rough sketch there for where you want the pathway and the big tree and the fence and sort of the background elements to it. And if you're following along with Infinite Painter, go ahead and use one of the pencils in the pens and pencils category. If you're doing this traditionally, use some vine charcoal or something that's easy to wipe off of your canvas. And I want to go ahead and start with the background trees. And the Pollock brush actually works the best. You can use a Velocity Splatter and, and try some of the other brushes, but the Pollock brush and Infinite Painter works the best. And if you're following along traditionally, you would use your number 10 or number 8 bristle brush and just lightly tap with the end of your brush on your canvas and you would use a mixture of dioxazine purple and throw in a little bit of hooker's green just to give it kind of a greenish tint in the background but we want lots of white mixed in with this because we want the background trees to be really light and then if you want to go ahead and add some light clouds in the background, you would use your bristle brush also with a dry brush stroke. Or you can use the cloudy brush in Infinite Painter. And you just want some really light, thin clouds that aren't um, real detailed or anything. Just give indications. And then I wanted to go ahead and use my flat oil brush for the background grass. And you can put this on a separate layer if you're using Infinite Painter. And you want to go ahead and use light colors of green. If you're following along traditionally, you want to use Thalo Yellow Green. And mix it with some Hooker's Green and a lot of um, white acrylic gesso. And a lot of maybe Cadmium Yellow. And that's for using your acrylics. And you just kind of want to make sort of a indistinct looking grass. You don't want any blades of grass or anything. You just kind of want um, a sort of a distant look of grass in the background. And then you want to go ahead and start putting in some background trees. You can use a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna with white acrylic gesso if you're following along with your acrylics. Use uh, the Leo brush if you're following along with Infinite Painter and just make it really small. And you want to make lots of crooked branches on these trees and, and make sure that they're, they're gnarled looking and crooked because you don't want them to look real straight because that won't look natural for the kind of trees that we're, we're doing here. So you want to go ahead and use kind of a grayish brown color for these trees. And you don't want them real dark because they're in the background. And then I'm going to add some underbrush and some bushes around them before I put the leaves on there. So I'm using kind of a middle 
color of green and you can use hooker's green if you're following along traditionally and throw in some cadmium yellow light and uh, some white you still want to keep this kind of a lighter green color because this is going to be sort of the background still and I'm using the Pollock brush and infinite painter you can use the bristle brush if you're following along traditionally then I wanted to make a distant path so I'm just making little indications of the path and it doesn't have to be a real uh, straight line in fact you don't want a straight line you want kind of rough looking edges and you can use a burnt sienna color and if you're following along with your acrylics and throw in touches of dioxazine purple with some white acrylic gesso and you can go ahead and just use your flat oil brush and infinite painter and this gives it kind of a rough painterly look which is what we want here this is a a country woodland path so it's not going to be paved it's not going to be smooth it's just going to be kind of a dirt road or dirt pathway so we don't want it to look real smooth or um, like it's tended all the time it's just a pathway that people walk on and then here I'm kind of smoothing them together and you can use schoolhouse chalk if you um, want to go ahead and smooth the colors in together if you're following along traditionally you'd use a paper towel or your finger and I'm throwing in touches of yellow ochre just to give it the uh, sunlight look that it's going to have when uh, the sunlight is shining through the trees on the road a little bit and we'll add more of that towards the end but you can add a little bit of it right now if you want to and then I want to go ahead and add the leaves to the middle ground trees and again you don't want these real dark so I'm using the Pollock brush with kind of a medium color of green if you're following traditionally you can use hooker's green there's even in Liquitex a springtime green I think or spring green and that would probably work well and you want to go ahead and just put those leaves on the trees and tap them um, with your bristle brush if you're following along with acrylics you would just tap them sort of on the canvas like you did with the background trees and also do this for the underbrush trees and I'm adding a little bit of a lighter green layer to give it more depth so you go ahead and put that over some of the darker color on your trees and then I'm highlighting the trunks a little bit with a lighter uh, brown color and you just want to go ahead and let the dark show through a little bit and make sure that you don't kill all of it with your highlights because that is what gives depth to your picture so you want to go ahead and do that and then in part two this is the end of part one and in part two we'll go ahead and add the bigger tree and the fence and um, work more on the road so if you're interested in seeing that hit the subscribe button thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you have any questions just leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later